Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Great to have you with me here today and looking forward, as always, to getting into our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday show. Even when we're focused on weight loss, we're always putting the emphasis on wellness. And that's because if you look at overall weight gain, I want you to understand that it is a metabolic issue and that it really can be a deep health-related issue. So what we do is we try to find those underlying root cause imbalances, but sometimes it's even easier than we may think. So that's why on today's show, I want to go over the all-important topic of how to catch and control unconscious eating. This is going to be really important because it can give you that quick win that you need to stay motivated, stay on track, and get the results that you're looking for while then maintaining the results and getting even more. So here's the thing. On previous shows, we've spoken about many times all the underlying root causes of why you're not able to lose the weight, why you can't keep the weight off. And yes, it can be thyroid related. It can be adrenal related. It can be toxicity related. There are many different reasons why. And we know that, right? We can see and we can quote all the medical research. We've done that before. We've given you action plans on how to take back control of that body and mind. But today though, we want to stay a little bit more focused on the mind. And we really want to get into what we call mindful based eating. So I'm going to go at this from, I would say a more real world, realistic perspective. And something that I know that you can do, that I'm only asking you for a seven-day commitment, a full seven days, but I'm looking for a seven-day commitment, and it will take you no more than, I would say, five minutes worth of work, maybe 10 maximum, for the entire day. That's it. So five or 10 minutes a day could, in my opinion, literally change the way that you look at food. Now, we'll do this in wellness-based cases and, of course, weight loss-based cases. And the reason we do this is to build self-awareness. It's something that I talk about on our Motivation and Mindset Monday shows. And the more years I have in practice, the more I realize that self-awareness is the key to getting well, to losing the weight, and as I like to say, feel alive again, to getting your life back. And it's because we are driven essentially by our unconscious habits and our subconscious mind. So we move through the day for the most part on autopilot. And that can happen with our food as well. And if you are not planning that day, if you are not looking at your meals, what happens is the next thing you know, there's a lot of things that might sneak in there and you're not even aware of it. So here's what I want you to do. This is a no cost free way to do this. I'm going to give you a couple apps that you can download. I will give you the old fashioned piece of paper and a pen. But what I would like you to do is keep, I'm going to give you a very specific way to do it though. I'm going to have you just simply write down your foods. You can calculate calories and carbs and macros. I'll give you an easy way to do that if you want. You can do all of this for free, but I need you to commit for seven days. And here's why. Many of us, when we're stressed or when we're anxious, we turn to food to bring us some comfort and to relax us. And for good reason. Food actually has been shown to increase serotonin. It can increase dopamine. So it can give us a little bit of a boost. It can make us feel a little bit better. And if it's carbohydrate-based or there's a little bit of sweets, there's a reason why we reach for sweets, right? And it's because only sweet decreases cortisol. So you have to understand this. Okay, it's new in terms of conventional medicine, but anyone that studied Ayurvedic medicine in depth, they know that you give the vata body type sweet. It doesn't mean you give them candy but you give them the sweet taste. Now, Ayurveda was not necessarily talking in terms of cortisol, but they talked about a high vata state. And what does that mean? Well, it means a higher cortisol, higher adrenaline, higher dopamine, higher anxiety, higher stress state. It's the ectomorph. It is the vata-based mindset. Now, you can have, you can be an endomorphic body type and also have a vata-based mindset. The problem is just because you have the vata mindset doesn't mean you have the vata body. So when you turn to sweet, 
it spikes blood sugar, spikes insulin, you start to gain more fat or it's harder to lose it. That's why I don't love all the people out there preaching right now. Here's your body type. Here's what to do. It's a game. They make it as a game. It's not a game. I mean, I love this industry as much as anybody, but the, your dosha type is not a game. It should not be guesswork. It should not be that. And you should not bring into the mental side of the equation your body type. Now, I know you can do a separate quiz for the mental side of it. I've done that before in the podcast. I've given you that starting with episode 900 through. But the problem is this. Everybody, for the most part, in our Western-based culture is stressed, is a little bit anxious. Sometimes they can't turn off their mind. Well, that means then everybody is the Vata body type? Of course not. We know that. We know that's not true. And that's why... I'm not naming any names, but you have to be careful where you're getting your information from. You can't just take a cute little quiz, and if it's based on the mental aspect, think that that's your body type, because then you start eating an anti or a vata pacifying body type diet, and all of a sudden you gain 10 pounds in two weeks, and you said, I thought I was supposed to be eating all these starches and all this. Yes, you were, if you were truly a vata ectomorphic body type, but if you're a vata mindset, mindset, I don't know why I can't say mindset today. But if you're a Vata mindset, but you have a Kapha body, the foods that you eat are not going to be right for your body type. Okay, I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth in the future. I have talked about it on previous shows. I would love you to go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and simply type in Ayurveda, Ayurvedic, and you'll get all the shows in that starting with episode 900 on once a week. I typically do one week a show, not every week on Ayurveda, and I try to teach this beautiful form of medicine that I had the pleasure of learning from my mentor, Dr. Pete, and I had the great pleasure of studying overseas three times in India and Sri Lanka to study Ayurvedic medicine. So, okay, all of that to say, many of us use food as comfort. We also, at the end of a hard day, we like to reward ourselves, right? Finish with dinner, or we're just right before dinner, you have a glass of wine, or you have a couple little snacks here just to tide you over. And then after dinner, you sit on the couch, you're like, you know what? No, it would be great right now. Maybe some chips, some nachos or some ice cream or, you know, you name it. Maybe just a little bit of, we're being healthy, so we have a little bit of dark chocolate. And a little bit of dark chocolate might turn into a lot of dark chocolate. And next thing you know, we've eaten a couple hundred calories with some good amount of sugar and fat from dark chocolate. So what I want you to do is this, and and I'm not asking you to do this for the rest of your life because I know that it's tedious and I know that it can be a little too boring for most people. But I've done this many times in my life. I've used it for weight gain. I've used it for body fat loss. I've used it to track just what foods I'm eating. And I've used it for this exact thing that we're talking about right now. So what I would like you to do is keep a food journal for one week, seven days. Can't be six days because I need you to get in the weekend days as well. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to keep this super simple. I want you to use that little spiral bound notebook that you get at your local CVS, Rite Aid, or whatever pharmacy, drugstore type place. Super easy to do. You can throw it in any bag. You can just write down whatever you're eating. But I need you to do this. I need you to write down everything that you're eating. That's where it gets tricky for a lot of people. I need you to write down how much water you consumed, when you consumed it time-wise, the food, what time you consumed it, and how much. Now, you don't need to measure your food. I've never once asked people to do that. Well, I shouldn't say that for, you know, very specific figure competitors, bodybuilder, et cetera. I'll I'll do that, but that's not general population. I just need you to say about two tablespoons of this, about a cup of that. That's it. That's all I need you to do, okay? So you can do this on a spiral-bound book, a piece of paper that you keep in your pocket, but I need all seven days. But here's what else that I want you to do. Okay, so as you're going through this, I know that, you know, it can get boring and tedious. Like, why am I writing these things down? Here's why. You are going to find yourself presented, I believe, a lot more opportunities to eat at work and to just kind of mindlessly eat. You walk by a vending machine or there's some food out at work or a lot of corporate places have kind of like a snack bar where you can grab things during the day. You might have a bag of nuts at the desk or whatever it might be. And all I want you to do is if you're having trouble maintaining weight or you're bloated, you get bloating, you get digestive-based issues, we need to track our food. And here's what we can do. We can use the, write it down. You can also do what I do oftentimes, which is just, I use my iPhone and there's that note app. You can just literally pull up a new note 
and you can do it for each day or just use OneNote, which is what I do to track everything all at once. So what you do is you just go in there. Okay. And don't write it in ahead of time. It has to be when you're doing it. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. So when I wake up and I have my glass of water, I'll literally just put in eight ounces of water, one scoop of daily fruit and vegetable blend, a half of squeezed lemon and a pinch of sea salt. Okay. And then I'm, I'm good. That's all I write. And then I drink it. So I'm done. Easy. Now I'm going to the bathroom, brush my teeth, all those different things. And then I come back out and I write my smoothie and I'm going to put, okay, two cups of wild blueberries or mixed berries, whatever it might be. Two scoops of daily nutritional support. I'm going to put in any greens that I put in there, fresh greens, and then a, a tablespoon of organic coconut cream. And then I put in my 16 ounces of water, a couple ounces, and I'll put in how much it is because I can measure it right in the blender, macadamia nut milk or coconut milk or uh, whatever it might be that I'm putting in there or, or nothing. It might just all be water. And then I blend it up and then I write that down. Okay, now I'm good. And then remember, if you snack mid-morning or you grab a coffee and you grab a cookie with that or a muffin, you have to write it down. That's the trick. So I'll tell you right now, I think you'll be surprised how many times a week things sneak in there. They really do. An extra coffee with cream or some milk or you'll start to see that there isn't that time between meals like maybe you thought there was. Or you're putting, you ate and then just like a half hour, hour later, you put more food in. Well, that can cause bloating. That can cause distension and bacterial overgrowth. So I did a show a while back called something about why move to three meals a day or something like that. But check out that show in terms of balancing your blood sugar. Uh, And so this is super important, but it will also show you multiple things. How long overnight did you fast? When did you wake up and first eat? Did you get your 12 hours in overnight or not? And you know, you have to really write that down. Or was it only 10 hours? Was it closer to 14? How do you feel going the 14 hours? Do you feel pretty good? So this is going to give you a lot of data to look at by only writing down your food and the timing alone. And then at lunch, now, if you know you have to write it down, you have to put it on paper. You have to. And then you have to say, okay, I have to write it down. Does that mean I should eat this? And this is one of the huge benefits that if your personal trainer or nutritionist makes you do this, this is huge. Every single new client that comes into our studio here in Boston for body transformation, so we have two places, two clinics, one's for functional medicine and one is for or integrative medicine and one is for personal training, nutrition, body transformation. That's Stephen Cabral Studio. So that's obviously only local. So people come in and they have to fill out a food journal. We give them just this thing, the sheets, they can make copies of it. They have food choices to pull from. We make it super easy, but they have to write it all down. And we can tell, we've been doing this a long time. We can tell if you wrote them all in one day, right? What we want to see is write in exactly how much you're eating. Then did you have a mid-afternoon snack? And we like to say like, oh, I actually, yeah, I've been, I was drinking, I drank a lot more alcohol than actually I thought that I did. I thought I only had it, you know, I was really thinking once or twice a week. It turned out it was three to four times a week. So what you're doing is one, it's about self-awareness. It really is. You're just really seeing that there are some real challenges in life that are potentially holding you back from reaching your wellness goals and your weight loss goals. Because if you're snacking a lot between meals, it's not ideal for someone to look to lose weight because you're never truly stabilizing blood sugar. You need to let those blood sugar levels fall, which could take three hours after a meal for some people, especially that endomorphic body type, more of the kapha-based body type, or those who are a little bit more insulin desensitized. So their insulin, or there's, I should say it's more the cell membranes, are not allowing the insulin to shuttle the glucose into the cells. So super important we begin to look at that. I think that's just eye-opening. I really do. And I, I wouldn't make it a whole podcast topic if I haven't seen tremendous results from it. So a couple other tips that we've used over the years is this, is that you want to have either that notebook or that note on your phone or whatever it is ready to go. The other one that I've recommended before, but honestly, you could use any of them. I know there's one called My Fitness Pal. I don't know if that's one I was charged or not. One that I use that's completely free that I've recommended for, I'm going to try to see if I can think of it right now. It's been honestly 12 years, I think. And it's called Lose It. Um, L-O-S-E. Well, it's Lose It. I think you could probably spell that. And I've used that one for years. It's super easy. I have no affiliation with this company except that I think at one point they were actually um, a Cambridge-based or Boston-based company. And 
what you do is you can actually see your macros at the end of the day. So you write in all your foods. It has this great search bar where you can literally, if it's, you can pull up um, oatmeal or sweet potato or whatever it is, and then pull it up. Now, if it's not there, you have to ask yourself, hmm, I might not be eating enough whole foods, right? So that's a great thing to look at as well. Be more self-aware of that. And then, so for example, like let's say you do the daily nutritional support shake in the morning. You can actually add your own custom food. So you could put in the fat, the carbs, and the protein of the daily nutritional support. And then you can put that in as your kind of one of your go-to foods and you just press, okay, add this. Makes it super easy to do. So again, I like the app. I just think it's easy. And then at the end of the day, because sometimes I'll track as like, okay, what were my carbs here for today? What was my fat? What was my protein? Because I just want to make sure I'm not going too high in certain categories that I look at for myself. And I'll just do that. Now, you do it for seven days to become aware of it. But then I want to share something with you. Uh, my diet is essentially now this, it's the easy, it's the, almost the same every single day. Smoothies basically the same every single morning. And then at lunch, almost always the same, just a couple things change here and there, but it's an easy hypoallergenic lunch that I've shared before. I actually shared this in my email last week. Hopefully you're on my email list. And then on um, at dinner, that's what always rotates. So it's a different type of protein. It's a different type of starch. There are different types of vegetables. And it's typically always olive oil. That never changes. That's the fat. So I don't have to do seven days because I know my diet's always the same. But for the most part, you're not going to have to eventually either. And here's why. You will find a diet that works really well for your body if you track in the beginning. If you do the work in the beginning, like I'm telling you to do right now, it will pay off for years to come. So now I can maintain the weight that I want to, essentially the, the body that I want to, have the energy that I want based on this nutrition meal plan. And then on the days that I do my workouts, oftentimes... I'll add in then a second smoothie mid-afternoon if it's a hard workout. Or uh, lately, I've been doing the crisp apple daily fruit and vegetable blend, which um, I just love the taste of it. Now, I'll do a shake after the workout. If my dinner's not going to be for a couple hours after that because I don't like to get too low in blood sugar. So that's what I'll do. Now, I'll add that in to my workout day. So Amanda and I actually did an interview, um, if you check that out, last week. And we hers is just a little different methodology, but it all kind of comes out the same. Because on the days that I exercise, I eat a little bit more. And that kind of makes sense, right? And so it works really well with my body. Now, how do you get to know your body? Well, first, you need to keep track of what you're eating for a week. And you weigh yourself at the end of it. If you lost weight at the end of that week by not trying to do anything special except write down what you're eating, it was most likely because you were more self-aware and you didn't let all those little snacks add up in there. You didn't add all the fun little things at work and whatever it might be. So you might have lost a pound or two. You said, wow this really worked. And all I did was cut out my between meal snacking. And I tried not to eat after dinner before bed. That's it. And you can still do your one uh, flex meal a week where you enjoy whatever you would like. Don't weigh yourself after that meal if you are weighing yourself at all. Now, for the most part, we work with, I shouldn't say for the most part, but we work with a lot of people in our practice who've had previous eating-based disorders, and we want to be super sensitive around that area. So we don't obviously have them weigh themselves, but we just go by how they feel overall. And we love that anyways. That's a great way to do it. You'll know by how your clothes look, by how radiant your skin is. So that's a great way to do it too. But if that worked for you, then you know you were doing something previously that wasn't mindful-based eating right? That you were doing unconscious eating. Now, mindfulness eating is that you actually, and this is the next level, when you go to eat, you actually stop, that you're not eating on the run, that you sit down, whether it's at your desk, if you have to, or at a table, but not on the run, that you sit down and you enjoy that food. You give thanks for it. Truly, it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving in order to give thanks for the meal. And it's that we are in an amazing position because many other people in the world are not. And I saw that firsthand. Of course, I've seen, you know, I live in Boston and any major city, there's going to be homeless people and we want to do all we can um, to support them mentally, physically as well. But in India, I saw absolute depravity and I saw people who had nothing, not even clothes on their body. And, you know, to this day, I can feel it right now inside me, you know, it makes you, if you see that, it makes you really emotional. I mean, these are real people, real children with her mom, you know, begging for food, that is a sight that when you see it in person, not just on TV, not just in a video, 
where you stop and you think about, wow, I am truly lucky that I can literally walk out my door or take a quick car ride and get any food that I need, anything that I want. So we want for essentially nothing. If you're listening to this podcast, you're most likely in that category. So, you know, it's nice to stop, give thanks, breathe. And the other reason I say this is an actual biological function. So if you are stressed while eating, you're not going to be able to properly process that food. You're not going to be able to properly break it down, which means it might ferment in your stomach, which means it can cause bloating and gas and discomfort, which makes you don't, you don't feel well. So then you might make other poor food choices later in the day. The goal is to be relaxed while eating. You're going to turn on those enzymes, the hydrochloric acid, and you're going to better absorb your food. Now, if you do that, well, then you're going to absorb more of the micronutrients and your body then will hopefully feel more satiated. It won't keep calling out for more and more calories because the calories that you do take in, you're fully chewing them up and you're absorbing all of those nutrients. If you have issues right now with really feel like the food's not moving through you and breaking it down well enough, simply use a daily digestive enzyme. It's an easy thing to do just to be able to break your food down at a better degree and just take that one or two capsules before meal. Super easy to do. So that's an easy thing just to get started. And the last thing that I'll say about keeping this food journal is that I want you to be aware during this one week of the process so that it's not that you are forcing yourself to do it. It's not that you have to do it because you're mad at yourself that you're not able to lose the weight or get bloated or whatever it might be. It's that you get to do it. It's that you get to enjoy this process of self-discovery. We have to stop looking at trying to lose weight or get our bodies healthy as you know, something that we have to do, that we're making ourselves do it because we don't like how we don't look, that we don't like how we feel. But we're actually doing something to improve our overall health and most likely our overall longevity and the quality of our life. Because the more overweight you are has nothing to do with vanity at all, but it's biological. You're less likely to live a long, healthy life. Your chance of cancer goes up, your chance of diabetes, of high blood pressure, of cardiovascular disease skyrocket. So essentially what I just named were the top three causes of death. And if we can decrease those by losing weight, getting our body healthier, we have a longer chance of living or a chance of living longer. And also we're gonna have less stress on our joints. And another big one is this. When you lose that weight, can you imagine what it'd be like to not walk around with a 10 pound weighted vest on or a 20 pound weighted vest or maybe even more? Think about how much more energy you'd have. Be easier to go up the stairs. Be easier to bend down, pick things up. Be easier to get up off the ground. All of those things. And we see that every single day in our practice. And that's what I want for you as well. So easy to do. Use the Notes app in your phone. It's free. Use the Lose It app or another one like that, whether it be, I think it's Calorie Counter, Calorie King, My Fitness Pal, whatever it is. Use one of those. They're free. Or you can use the old Spiral Bound Notebook. But all I want you to do is track all of your water. Maybe you're not drinking your eight glasses of water a day. Maybe you're drinking it too much with the meal. And then I want you to track all of your foods. How much space between your meals are there? That's another great thing to do. But remember, you'll have all of that data by simply writing it down from when you wake up to literally what you drink before you go to bed. Mark them all down. I'll tell you this. I can't think of a single person that ever regretted doing this exercise because what it did was it took the unconscious eating and brought it back to more mindfulness. And just that alone, just the self-awareness goes through the roof, your body's ability then to just be more aware of everything that you do in life and all the benefits that you'll receive from getting back onto a healthy meal plan and nutrition plan will be there for you. So thank you so much for tuning into today's show. Always a pleasure. Love doing these shows. And uh, again, thank you all for your support. If this show was helpful, please do feel free to pass along to anyone else you believe in. It may serve. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp parts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources. 